Up in the sky, far away, there's a magical world where we play. So come along with me, and you'll be happy. Thank you folks for tuning in. How are y'all doing? Oh my gosh, another late night opportunity. Oh, what? It's not, it's literally right there. What do you mean? Like, respawn points. I guess I did move the bed last time. Well, welcome back folks to the episode of Be Happy, where we're doing a lot better. We're doing a lot better. You know what? You, you might've thought, you know what? Reese did say that this was a mini series and he did look like he was starting to lose his mind at the end of episode 10. And maybe the time has come for this series to meet its uh, long predestined conclusion. And you know what? You might not have been wrong to think that because it is a mini series. Some of you have probably been trying to figure out what that means. What do I mean by mini? Hold on. Is this sort of room big enough for bees? Should we make this a bigger area? Maybe we should. So we've gone out, let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's go out past this three. One, two, three. Yeah. See, I'm not telling you what it means to be a miniseries or how many episodes that entitles. What I am going to tell you is that I need to stop talking and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus that side is 16, 17, 18, 19. So this also needs to be 19. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I literally have to count out loud or I will mess this up. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I can stop talking now because we should be able to simply square it while I explain that. I mean, there was never really any danger of me quitting at the end of episode 10 because I intended to go until we had functioning bee farms of some kind. But yeah, you know what? We never really did discuss what it meant for this series to conclude, what it, what it meant for a mini series to conclude, what it meant to even be a mini series was never actually brought up at any point. So your concerns, I'm going to say we're well founded. You're not paranoid to question whether or not I might just go a little crazy, a little cuckoo, and delete it all. Uh, you know what? That's that's a reasonable concern. I've shrugged this up, but that's okay, because we actually do need this to be too thick. Not too thick as in, like, too T-O-O, as in it's too thick for us to deal with, but too as in T-W-O, as in the number. We need this to be too thick, so we're actually going to have to do that all the way around anyway. So it's it's no major, like, loss. We're not going to lose any of this stone. It's all going to get left in place here and used. I'm trying to figure out how we're going to elevate the next level of this. We're going to completely encapsulate all of this, by the way, in case I didn't make that clear yet. All of this is going to be caged in so that the bees cannot escape. They're going to be living out the entirety of their lives inside of here until we have... I don't know, a new Beatrium. Beatrium 2, Electronic Beatrium Lou. I, I don't know. This can maybe be split up into sub subsections for different types of bees. I haven't figured that out yet. We're, we're still figuring it all out, okay? So that is still filling up. This one is filled up. So we could start nabbing cobblestone from there if we wanted to, or we can just continue to nab it from here and it'll it'll continue to feed. It doesn't really matter. But want to keep these topped off and we could automate this too, kind of if we felt like it, but I don't feel like it right now. I've got other things I want to focus on. I want to get the Beatrium finished so we can get bees back out and about and hopefully pollinating, making some honey, making some sand. How do you automate the bees once you have them out and about? Like what then? Okay, so they produce sand and gravel and things, but then what? What do you do after that? I have no clue. Something else we need to pay attention to is dirt. We don't have enough to fill this in, and that was the plan, was to fill all of this in with dirt, which means that we're going to need way more leaves than I, than I have at this present moment. I do have a lot of wheat seeds, and we can... I mean, we have so many wheat seeds. We don't need that many. And I know that we can actually turn wheat seeds into grass. I don't know what the ratio is here, though. Oh, this is trying again, bless it. Or into dirt, I should say, not necessarily grass. Although, can we make grass? Maybe if we spelled it right? Oh, you can. You can make grass. 
Dirt. Dirt and seeds. We're absolutely doing that. Because we even mentioned before that grass is slightly better inside of a botany pot. At least for a sapling. I don't know about wheat. Let's look up just regular old seed. And we'll hit the uses key. Check out botany pot. And I, we might just have to... Oh, we can manually... If we hold down shift, we can manually cycle through here. So obviously dirt has... Yeah! It's a small modifier, mind you. But a modifier nonetheless. And that's all you need, really. Give me that grass. Are you making one? Are you going to keep making them? I think if we actually keep this thing fed with... Oh, gosh, look at that. Okay, yeah. If we add more seeds, it should do it again. So let's go ahead and get this. This also means that we can, if we wanted to, just place this out here. And it would start spreading in from both directions. It'd be like burning the candle at both ends, but like a more positive version of that. Because that's normally a negative thing. It's more like spreading the fire at both ends. Well... I mean, that could also be, depending on context, uh, a bit of a negative thing. But here we go. Very modest growth modifier. Ha have a look at that. I don't remember what the tree took before. What do you take? What is your grow time inside of there, normally? If we have a look at a seed, is it like... Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, seed. 50 seconds? Well, let's see what it is when we use grass instead, all right? Let's see what we get instead. Go ahead and break this and hope that it doesn't fly off the world. There we go. So we'll plop it all down. And we're going to have to be quick about this. What did we say? What did I say it was? <laughs> 50 seconds? Was that right? 50 seconds. 47 seconds! Okay! That's an improvement over the course of many minutes. That's an additional cycle, right? And that's all we can hope for, really. We've almost got a stack of wheat out of this thing. Come on. It's been worth it. It's obviously been worth it. We could make part of the floor out of glass as well. I was going to make the walls out of wooden fence so that it would allow air to blow through and give the bees like a nice breeze. I thought that could be good. I also thought that using stairs along the side here would give the building uh, a bit more texture, if you know what I mean. I want it to look nice. So if we made, like, let's say, hold on, this is not a good ratio. No, 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 not at all. Six to four, we're not doing that. If we had like a ton of extra materials, we might, but not under those circumstances. I think under those circumstances, we'll just go ahead and place these down normally. And Oh God, why would I keep walking? I promise you I didn't do anything. I promise you that wasn't me. Every so often the game just freaks out and does things like it holds down keys that I'm not holding down. It's a little bit unnerving every single time. That's why we need to get this place built up properly. I came over here to do something. I came over here to plant saplings because we need more leaves in order to keep getting dirt made. So we're going to have to go back to our roots in a sense for a moment, but not really our roots, more like the roots of these trees and uh, collect grass or not grass, but really uh, leaves even, if you will. And... We just need to collect a bit so that this can continue its automated work of making dirt. One of those is making dirt, and then the other one is now... I think that one back there is automated to make dirt. That one is automated to make clay. Well, you can't keep making grass. You, you don't even have any dirt to work with. So stop being ridiculous and go back to... Yeah, yeah, go do that instead. That's fine. Just leave those seeds in there for now. It'll be okay. We just need a ton more dirt is the issue. So that means we need a ton more... Uh, grass. That's also going to re-automate the process of making water, which we needed for clay automation, which I don't know if we really need to worry about at the present moment, but I'm not going to correct it. Yeah, I'm planting four again, not because it really does much for us, but because the one time we managed to get a crazy big tree was when I actually did plant four of them. So, you know, even if nothing comes of it 100% of the time, you know, it's that it's that it's that two percent of the time that we're looking for. See, that's just a regular old tree that's useless to us. Is it more? Is it like faster if I just? Yeah, it absolutely is. Okay, that whole shifting nonsense is a waste of your time. Don't even bother like getting down and jiggy when it comes to trying to grow these trees faster. Like inspire growth. If you really want to inspire growth, apparently this is a lesson for everyone. Uh, just jog, just jog, almost in place but not quite. Watch this. I'll demonstrate. Watch. You ready? Okay, look at that. <laughs> you see what I mean? Oh, that is insane. That is just so much more efficient. And I get it. If we're on a small sky island and we don't have that much room to work with, then sure, 
it makes sense to do the whole shift in place situation because you don't have enough room to actually jog around. But I mean, under the circumstances we're in right now, where I can just do this. Look at that. Crazy. Very fast. Very efficient. We are burning through this comma, and I keep opening up the wrong tool. There we go. We should consider... Oh my gosh, can I reach that? <sighs> All right, then. <laughs> So be it. At least we got some more saplings out of the deal. Gosh, but we got many saplings. Did we not just then? See, that's a good tree. That's a great tree there. Let's go ahead and drop off all of our oak leaves. I think we're pretty good now. I think we can leave this thing as it is to continue to process more dirt for us. Although, again, we need a ton of dirt moving forward in order to fill all of this in before I feel comfortable walking around on it. But... Should we maybe make stone pathways down the middle? We we might not do... Well, well, we better do dirt here, now that I think about it. Because this is how the grass is getting in and all that. I also like the idea that all of these are connected by grass. In a world in the sky where there's just not a lot going on, you know? It's just barren. Like, there's no earth... There's no, there's no ground beneath our feet, nothing really grounding us. Just having, like, grass walkways, because we're barefoot, right? I assume. I'm, I don't have any boots made yet. So just walking along and feeling the soil and the soft grass between our toes as we move about our island here is probably somewhat... You know what? Yeah, let's make the whole thing dirt. I don't even care anymore. It's probably good for us. It's probably great for us, even. I'm not sure why we want to keep the bees separate or like how much room they need to interact with uh, can we just put them inside of cruel tiny cages i'm sure we probably could and it would probably be effective all the same but it just doesn't feel right does it also can we see the sun throughout the entire night cycle i bet you we can that's funny i've never i've never thought to look down not in this pack i've probably done it in sky factory or sky factory 2 or sky factory 2.5 or Sky Factory 3, or Sky Factory 4, or the new Sky Factory 1 that I've not played yet, but I know exists. At some point, I've probably done that. But not 2, because now that I think about it, instead of playing Sky Factory 2 as a sky block, the way that Bacon Donut intended, uh, I, some of you may remember this, I opted to instead load up the original Minecraft... What was it? The, like the, the world's first... It wasn't the first, I don't think. But the, the old survival map... Uh, a survival island. And I played it inside of that instead, which some people were like, this is not in keeping with the spirit. But it is, because Survival Island only had a few sort of bare minimum amount of resources and none of the modded stuff by default. So you had to do... Oh my gosh. Oh, Shrek me sideways. I should have anticipated this. I should have anticipated this. I did not think to light it up. What? You son of a gun! You absolute... Dinglehopper. We're going to take a nap. There's an arrow in my elbow, which puts an end to my adventuring days. At least that's all that spawned. Do we reckon I can take an Enderman? Do we reckon that's something I have the ability to do? With my Minecraft skill set, can I kill an Enderman with nothing but a... a ra you know what? We could probably make a sword to fight him with if we wanted to. And I think we do. I think we do. What are my what are my weapon options? We do have a regular bog standard sword. We have a comma. I think we're going to have to go regular bog. So it needs two skinny noodles and a bit of a fat fettuccine right there at the end. So obviously we're going to go with wood for our skinny noodles. And we're going to go with a fat fettuccine for the blade. Where is it? Is this one the fat fettuccine? What does the fat fettuccine look like? It's not that fat. It's probably that fat. It's that one right there. Beautiful. And then we will assemble it all together over here at the end. At some point, we can start putting modifiers on these. Uh, somehow. I don't really remember how. Is it like the default here? And then, yeah, you put stuff inside of here. don't really have anything that we can add to this right now. Other than... Uh, if we take check materials... and you, I have bone. Doesn't that add piercing to it or something? I don't know. I, don't, I wasn't really planning on opening any sort of like... Piercings parlor. I was trying to figure out the name of the person who gives someone like an ear piercing. I can't off the top of my head think about it. Bone! So we don't want to use it as a handle or a head. 
but it adds piercing, and piercing tool deals bonus damage, which attacks through armor. Can I just add bone mill? Do I have any? Can I say this any more in a question tone? Hi there, you. Just keep zipping around, thanks. Don't mind me, not plotting a way to kill you at the moment or anything like that. That's light gray dye, that's not bone mill. How does one go about... Oh my gosh, you, you're gonna have to stop that because you're freaking me out. Next thing you know, you can't let an Enderman hang around too long. Because next thing you know, he's built a tower and is contracting you for quests. You cannot have that. Not here, not again. We, 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 we want to avoid that for the time being. I don't think I have any bone mill. I think I might just have to make some. I mean, that's not difficult. We can do that. Did I get rid of both of my composters? I did. That's, I mean, fair, because we don't use them anymore. Probably ought not use these, though. I don't want to waste... Now, oh, tag with it. We'll use the oak leaves. Whatever. Wait just a moment, please. There we go. So if I just put that in here... It's not a full bone is the only issue, and it might actually take umbrage with it. Uh... That doesn't seem to do anything. But that doesn't mean it won't do anything. We might just need more. Sometimes, because sometimes I realize it wants me to use a full bone. But sometimes this is, like, does this, is this how you add modifiers? I have not played with Tinker's Construct recently enough to remember clearly off the top of my head if this is how this works. But I'm pretty sure you can add things like redstone and, oh, wait a minute, those are different, aren't they? Hold on, we're looking at the difference between materials and modifiers, aren't we? How do I get back to the main page? Modifiers, yeah, here we are. So, modifiers are extra enhancements that can be applied to a tool similar to enchantments. The section below describes each type traits upgrades. I'm sorry? You're not going to list them off to me? Traits are inborn abilities related to the creation of the tool. They're brought up. Yep, yep, I get that. Upgrades are standard improvements to a tool. They are usually done by applying an item and rubbing off some of its magic qualities, like redstone making tools faster. Upgrades require upgrade slots to be applied. Most tools start with three or four upgrade slots, though it's possible to get more slots through other types of modifiers. Full list of upgrades available on tools, along with Encyclopedia of Tinkering. What? Cruel Gon's puny smelting? What are you going on about? You're just making things up now. You're just you're saying abstract things. None of this is real. That doesn't seem to work. It does have three upgrades, and apparently it has an ability. And applying this does not appear to do anything at all. We'll leave this with cobblestone in it, and we'll put this in here. And we will we will now attempt, however foolishly this might end up being, to to deal with the Enderman threat. Because that's what we have to do, really, isn't it? This is this is our calling. We, we have been called to not just build this land, but to protect its denizens, all of them. We have bees in, in slumber right now. We have a chicken stuck in a cage. It, it, Cluckety McDuckety cannot defend himself. No one ever voted on that poll again. We have over 20 channel members at the time of this recording, and only 10 of them voted in the poll, and none of them were like, yeah, I want to go change the results of that poll. I want it to be called Cluckety McDuckety, they all said. And gosh darn it, if it didn't work for them. Are you son of a gun, you knew I was coming for you. You knew darn well. Come here. Nope, this is it. This is me and you. You sh shrekin' little goose. I've got an obituary? Really? Where's my stuff? Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. That's just fantastic. Yeah, that's when I died. And when I break this, is all of my stuff gonna fly over the edge? Hope not. It looks like it all went directly back into my inventory where it was. I guess we have to save this now. Up until now, we've not fallen off the world yet. So we've still avoided falling off the world. Unfortunately, we did just have our first death. How did you kill me so quickly? I don't want your flowers. If I get underneath here, can he reach me? He can, but barely. All right, in the end, in the end, we got him. Maybe that would have been a better idea to build some sort of a structure that I could stand under where he couldn't have reached me. I can't believe that's how we got our first death in this series. I was actually thinking earlier today before I started recording, I was like, man, we could have gone hardcore. 
and I, I probably would have survived, because what's going to kill me up there in the stars? Hubris. Hubris is going to be what kills me. It's what got the Jedi, too, according to Episode Eight, and that is accurate to the lore. Yes, the Jedi, it was the Jedi's hubris, but unfortunately, that's a terrible movie, so I try not to give it any credit. It, it does deserve some, it's got some it's got a couple of decent lines in an overall terrible film you know we are what they grow beyond that is the burden of any master that's a great line I'll, I'll give him that gosh darn it that's a pretty decent line and then uh, of course Kylo Ren is absolutely right when he says you know uh, let go of the past is that what he says kill it if you have to it's the only way to become what you were truly meant to be and i'm like yeah you know what kylo ren you're right that's why you're the good guy in this series he gets it where many other people don't get it kylo ren gets it and i do indeed respect that i i it was a bit weird for them to kill him off considering he was the de facto hero of the sequel trilogy uh, I don't get why they would kill him off in favor of Rey, who was obviously the villain, because Rey represents everything that's wrong with humanity. Uh, boring. Oh no, that that is what's that's like the number one flaw in humanity today. What you think is like hubris or something? No, it's just being boring, and Rey represents that in spades. How are we doing on the construction of dirt? See, we're not really making dirt as quickly as I feel like we need to in order to get the Betrium assembled. And also, we can't put down torches to prevent the spawning of more monsters until the Betrium is assembled. So I'm going to go ahead and alter the deal. Pray I don't alter it further. We're going to change this to be, yeah, that. Because I think it's probably out of, it's not out of sand. It's not. No, it's not out of sand. And this is still making water. Yeah, but it's all out of leaves. So we're going back to doing this again. Oh my goodness, how cyclical the world is. Round and around and around we go. One task begets another. We build the dirt. We cut down the tree. We build the dirt. We cut down the tree. We try to do something else, and where do we end up? Where does that lead you? Where, do, where you couldn't live with your failures, and where does that lead you? Back to cutting down the tree. It's a constant cycle. It's a constant. I just want to behead the tree is what I want to do. Should have gone for the head. Gosh darn it. And we go for a little jog. Oh dear lord. That's another way we could have potentially died. Is death by rapidly growing tree. And that would have been at least kind of funny. Could have made a montage out of that. Well no because it would have only happened the one time. That's the problem with things like the first time. It, it can only happen once. So you can't really make a montage out of it. Because it, it only happens the one time. You, you see where I'm, you see what I mean? We'll figure out materials and you. We'll figure out upgrading the sword later. For right now, the sword was effective. And we're going to go ahead and make it a mainstay up here. Although, it does do a little bit more damage. We probably would have been fine. The tag damage is actually lower. And I don't know why. I'm not sure what's causing it to be lower. Probably the wooden handle material, maybe? I don't know. I actually don't know. What am I doing? Oh, goodness. Right, this. I forgot. Yeah, somehow, for a moment, my mind wandered, and I forgot that my entire lot in life right now is cutting down leaves so that I continue to feed this chest, so that it can continue to give me a very slow, painfully slow trickle of dirt. I suppose we could help it along if we wanted to manually make it, but this is so much more efficient. We do have some grass blocks as well, so we will leave these behind. My inventory is getting to be a real mess. It's a real disgusting mess. I need to deal with that. I'm going to have to get rid of some of these things. Plant those. Heck, plant all of these, right? There we go. Deal with those later. And then inside of here, what do we have? Take this bush. I don't need it. Thank you very much. Take this... Well, hold on. Take this wheat in here, I think, is where we store wheat and eggs for whatever reason. We have so many eggs now. I don't know what to do with all of these eggs, if I'm honest with you. And then just to verify, we have no dirt in storage over here. No, we do not. Excellent. We're going to come over here. Grass is very slowly spreading. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to place grass in sort of certain areas along in here. And then hopefully that promotes the spread of grass throughout all of here quickly. That would be what we'd like to see happen. 
I guess now I can continue working on the frame, even if it's not going to, we're not going to be ready to finish the floor anytime soon. And we can start working on the roof as well. You might be wondering, well, geez, Reese, master of the construction, what plans do you have for the roof? You're such an absolutely incredibly handsome man. I have to assume you have an equally handsome roof idea. And first off, I wouldn't call the roof handsome. Uh, I find that to be a bit of a masculine trait. I would describe the roof as beautiful. Like 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 a beautiful woman or car. It's going to it's going to have a lot of elegance and style. And it'd be funny if at this point I said it was going to be made out of dirt or something. That would be the obvious direction to take this joke. But I, I'm not making a joke here. And oh gosh, it's just like a red beacon where I died. Can I hit M? And then can we just can we just hide that? Not necessarily even delete it. We'll keep it as a memento of this day where I died. I'm sort of torn now. Do I title this episode The Beatrium? I can't title it that because we're never mind. I'm not torn anymore. We didn't finish the Beatrium. Sorry, I can't. What do I not have a pickaxe? I do. That that makes this easy then. If I'm not titling it the Beatrium, it's obviously getting titled "I Died," and it's gonna have my Minecraft skin head with like little X's in my eyes. And yeah, that's gonna be perfect. Monsters could still spawn up here at any minute now, by the way. We now know that we are far enough out away from spawn for monsters to spawn. I thought it was further than that, honestly. I didn't realize they would spawn that close. We should probably do something, maybe. Go ahead and put down some torches. This is not permanent torch placement. We're gonna find some better places for them. But just for the time being, let's see. Uh, what was it, 19? So, what what is what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven what no that makes sense because that's to the outside i take it all back yeah so that's the center right there yeah wonderful so one two three so actually it's, it's one two three four five six seven eight nine middle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. And then one across from there as well. I think right here is going to be the middle, just by looking at it. Oh, very close, but wrong at the end of the day. And that's what matters. Doesn't matter how close you get it if at the end of the day you were actually wrong. Because you're still an embarrassment to everyone. Especially your mother, though. She takes no pride in you. You're a disappointment to the entire family. And you're never going to be welcomed in Nunu's house again. I don't know why anyone decided to call your grandmother Nunu. But I, I would probably, if I were her, I would protest by not buying any of you like, Christmas or birthday gifts until you relented and called me something less sort of cringy. I would not be a good Nunu for you. I would be a great grandpuff, though. I would be the best grandpuff. Did it look like I took damage there for a second? Did anyone else see that? I'm not close enough to have been burnt. There's no chance monsters, like, are flying around in the sky. What on earth could have damaged me just then? Was it just my imagination? Cluckety, did you see that? You're right, I'm just being paranoid. I need to calm down. Wait, I can't talk to you, Cluckety! We've been through this! You're, 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 you're a duck. No, you're not. You're a chicken. You can't talk, and I can't talk to you. And we can't pretend otherwise, because then those very nice men in their pretty white coats are going to come back. going to come back, and won't be able to stay with you anymore. So we're going to just... Nope, not talking to you. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're sweet, and you often have times have very nice things to say, but uh, I can't abide this. We're going to do this sort of a situation. Kind of in the middles. In, in the middle sections. I don't know why I'm doing this. I really... Uh, I mean, do I have a design idea in mind? Yes. Is it something I'm completely sold on? No. We're kind of limited by the materials we have available to us, as well as the methods we have for building, right? Because I can't fly around, so I can't very well reach the top and the, do all that sort of a thing. So we're sort of restricted in, in, in movement and in material. Material, even. I'm going to go ahead and do this too, because I have a feeling this room will end up being split into some sort of quadrants in the future, and having these placed like this is going to be handy. So the next step 
is going to be doing this side as well. I'm mindful of the gap. I'm not going to fall. I promise you I'm not going to fall because then getting our stuff back would be a nigh on impossible feat. So I'm going to do my best to avoid it. And it'll also be embarrassing at this point. To have made it this far and then to have that whole thing where I complained about like, oh, oh I thought I was never going to die, but I died to an Enderman and then immediately fall off the world. That would be super cringe, bro. Like super cringe brothers. You know, like Super Mario Brothers, but instead it's just Luigi constantly falling off of a... Because it would be Luigi, let's be honest. Not Charlie Day's Luigi either, just like bog-standard Luigi. Go out, oh, oh, constantly just falling off of the map. That sounded way more like Mario. You know, because you've got the voices. You've got, it's me, Mario. And I'm his brother Luigi. You all know the memes. You know what I'm going on about. So what are we going to fill these in with? Well, like I said before, we want the bees to be able to be able to enjoy a nice breeze from time to time. So we are going to create, uh, unless, you know what? We probably already have a ton. So let's be mindful of what we've already constructed. And we're going to grab some sticks. We're going to grab some more fences. And we're going to use fences. And, and let me just go ahead and demo that real quick. I do also want to create, now that grass has kind of passed through here, there's going to be a door. I guess right there. That's where we'll put the door to get into the Beatrium. And then that'll go there like that. And then this will have a nice sort of a breezy situation up here. Again, it's all about just letting light in, letting fresh air in, making sure the bees don't suffocate because I accidentally created like, some sort of a horrible uh, box from whence they cannot get any sort of oxygen. It would be cool to break these out now that I think about it and put the oak fence inside of there and we might end up doing that. We're going to have to give it some time and sort of figure out exactly what this the bee tree is going to look like when all is said and done. So we'll have to just kind of keep working on it from from this point but hopefully you folks get an idea now of what the Beatrium is going to be all about and we have been going for about 30 minutes again gosh man that 30 minutes really does fly by doesn't it I didn't even realize the last couple of episodes it's just been zooming it's nice to sort of have a direction that we're working in compared to previous installments uh you know starting with about episode 8 and then going into 9 and 10 where I was just flying blind as they say it's been nice to go in everything's real chill and we're just we're working towards this really great goal of of a beatrium it's a beautiful idea it's the sort of thing you could like write home to your parents about if you came up with it which you didn't so if you do write home to them about it make sure you tell them that it was my idea but just you know like if you went away to a summer camp or whatever and they were trying to figure out like hey campers this year as part of your summer camp curriculum we're gonna be beekeeping uh, we really need a way to keep the bees safe, though, from, like, flying off of the world. And, and you write home to your parents, like, Mom, Dad, I came up with the Beatrium. And Mom and Dad are just like, oh, no, we've sent our son away to some sort of slave labor camp where they're, they've put him to work raising bees. We're, we're monster parents. Oh, no! And then there's this whole thing. There's, like, a whole... You don't see it. It's all happening behind the scenes. But, like, there's this whole ordeal going on back home where your parents are petitioning to have the government shut the camp down because they don't want to send you back or they will but they're not going to refund the parents and they're like well we didn't know we were sending them away for slave labor and they're like well you should have known it was in it was in the contract you signed when you signed your kids away to us for the summer we we're going to be putting them to work in the beehive fields you should have known and in the legal system is like well you know they hire a lawyer and the lawyer says well listen technically you did agree to this you did agree to let your child work at this bee camp like some sort of monster parents like we didn't know you should have known you should have read the contract you should have hired a lawyer to read the contract for you that's what i'm here for but listen i think we can actually get them on child labor laws so we might have to elevate this from a civil case to an actual criminal trial and then the local like the district attorney is involved and then the next thing you know it's run all the way up to the supreme court and you have no idea any of this is happening because back in the bee farm there's no tv or internet so you don't realize that your life and your existence in this beekeeping camp that you've been sent away to to work in is like the driving factor between uh, behind one of the nation's like highest run stories like, everyone's talking about it this is more interesting than the 14th time joe biden fell over on his way to get some ice cream talking about how a gun stock can increase the size of the bullets which makes no sense like that was completely run off the radio 
and off of the TV and out of the newspapers so that they could talk about this kid who's been and all of his friends because all the other parents are involved now too like wait a minute we send our kids away to a slave labor camp what and everyone's freaking out about it and it's like yeah and it turns out that people are like, chanting your name and they're like liberate him liberate him and meanwhile you're just writing back to mom and dad like yeah so I figured out something called a Betrium and I'm pretty excited about it I really think it's gonna help the labor go by more quickly and more smoothly and then maybe me and my friend that I made will be able to go to bed sometime earlier than midnight I'm so tired mom and dad but I've been told that exhaustion is its own reward and that I should keep working so I can feel even more exhausted and even more rewarded and yeah, I mean, who knows how that lawsuit's going to end. Hopefully you end up home before the end of the summer. Imagine if the lawsuit concludes and the Supreme Court finds in favor of your parents, obviously, because child slave labor is not an acceptable thing. So they find in favor of your parents and they come back and they get you, but it's on literally the last day of camp. So you have no idea why all of these media trucks have pulled up and they're filming your parents pick you up and your mom's embracing you and weeping and your dad just comes up and claps you on the shoulder and it's like, we've come to take you home, son and or daughter. And you're like, well, yeah, mom and dad, that's what you do at the end of camp. And, and everyone's taking pictures of you and asking for an interview. And you're like, yeah, welcome. I made that Betrium over there. And they're like, oh, bless him. Bless him. They've, they've reprogrammed his brain. He's learned some sort of fake language. And, and then you just go home and it turns out all of your friends just went like to a normal summer camp where they also didn't keep up with it because they didn't care what was going on. Like, sure, they had their phones and everything, but what child is, like, looking up on the, on the internet? Like, yeah, what's the Supreme Court up to today? They don't care. So, as far as you know, life's just kind of back to normal, and you don't find out until years later, years later, when you are you know, like, you meet your spouse and, and you go on your first... Well, the person who will be your... Maybe not even. Maybe, maybe you meet your spouse and you get married, and then you're sitting around one day... And, and you've been married for years and your child walks into the room and goes, Dad? Or Mom? I was reading through a history book and you're in there? And you kind of like adjust your glasses and you go, What? Come on over here, Sonny Jim. Let me have a look at that. Uh, and or daughter Jill, whatever. And then they, they, you have a look at it and you go, Well, by gum, that person that was involved in this lawsuit looks just like me and had my name and had my parents' names. Crazy! And then the realization comes crashing in that, yes, you were child slave labor at a, a beekeeping camp that your parents signed you away to because they didn't read the contract. Ironic now, you finally understand why they pressured you to become a lawyer so that you could look through your own contracts and not end up in these situations. Did I just have two pieces of bread? Where'd the other one go? Well, thank you folks for watching. Uh, God bless you. And we'll continue the beat trim in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>